to my youtube channel so let's just dive straight to solving the problem we have describing this periodic function analytically so we have to define analytically the, the, the periodic functions the, the periodic function graph we have in front we have in front of us right so um i explained what um analysis of periodic function on our last video i explained what it means and what um it actually means then um now let's just start solving the problem we have in front of us so um so now like i said we take the most common relationship of y right so now let's start from between zero and two we have here now if you see this this is not like um the first example we did on last video this is um more like this a slanted straight line graph this is more like the second example we did on last video now if you have not watched uh, my last video i advise you to watch it or click the i button at the top here it will take you to the last video i did so you see between zero and two there is a straight line right there's a straight line graph here then the straight line also proceeds down so this is where, the, where it ends so now i can call this three right so the, i can say this is zero two four and the middle here is three so then it it protrudes down here right so i can say this is a straight line graph this is just a straight line graph right so it, the straight line graph is between zero and three right on the x-axis right is between what zero and three but we don't know the values of y on the i on the on the y-axis because it changes values of y changes it changes it changes it changes and changes it's more like the second example we did so the values of y changes changes and changes and changes so we don't know the values of y so we can just say between let's call this my condition one between x equal to zero and x equal to three fx is a straight line graph fx is equal to y is equal to mx plus c as easy as that because the values the values of y changes right we can just give it a value because there, there are no constant value between 0 and 3. They are changing values. So now, let's calculate the equation of straight line we have in front of us. So we're having y is equal to mx plus c. So now, the first thing we do is to find our slope. My slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. My, now, let's, let me just bring out the graph I, we have in front of us. So this is the graph we are technically looking at. I'm just I'm trying to make it so that you understand it. So this is zero and this is three. Sorry, this is two and this is three. So let's now let's calculate my slope. So now if looking at the graph, what is my y2 and what is my one? Now since this is a downward slope, my this is my first value of y, my y1 is two, and my final value of y is what? Minus one, which is this between two and minus one. So now my first value of x, x1 is what? Zero. Right? Because this is zero. And my final value of x, which is my x2, is what? Three. So my y1 is two. My y2 is minus one. My x1 is zero. My x2 is what? Three. So now let's find the slope. My slope m is equal to minus one minus two divided by three, which is minus one. That is my slope. So, writing it on my equation, this is or substituting it into my equation of straight line I have. So, this is minus x plus c. So, um, what we do next is to find the value of my c. So, I'm just picking a random, picking two random values on your graph. So, when x is um, 3, y is minus 1. Let's use that. When x is 3, my, y is minus Or you can use when x is 2, y is 0. Yeah, or you can use when x is 0, y is 2. Anyone you want. So now um, I'm going to be using when x is um, minus when x is minus yeah let's let's use when x is three y is minus one so when x is three y is minus one so we have minus three and minus one right and x is three y is minus one this is what I'm using so plus c so this is minus one plus three equals c so c is equals to two this is my um you can call it your intercept or this is just basically my c. So my equation of like straight line I'm having, I'm having is y y is equal to minus x plus two. So the range of values between zero and three, which we have as our first condition, are zero less than x and less than three. My fx is equal to minus x plus two. So we've analyzed this first condition, which is this straight line we have here. 
Now, all we need to do is to analyze this this one, and that is that because when you analyze the first two lines on your graph, then it is con because it, because it's a periodic function, then it cons it is constant throughout the rest of your graph. It can be to x is equals to infinity and so on and so forth because it's a periodic function. It's a periodic function, so you can analyze and ana you can analyze these first two these first two lines. Then it's it you know it's constant throughout the graph. So let's take it. Let's take my second condition now. Since I've analyzed this first one, let's analyze this one. Once you analyze this one, you know that it's the same thing for this one, it's the same thing for this one, because it's a periodic function. So, analyzing this graph between 3 and 5, right? Now, if you see this is a straight line graph, perfect, simple, no need, no need for calculation, we just need to put our value. So, since it's a straight line graph, between x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 5, y is equal to minus 1. So, we don't need, a, we don't, we don't need any calculation. Why we did a calculation for here? Because we were having a slanted line. So, so we decide to express it, express the line as the equation of, of the line. So my, my second condition between x equals to 5, sorry, between x equals to 3 and 5, sorry, between x equals to 3 and x equals to 5, right? Looking at, it, looking at it again, between x equals to 3 and x equals to 5, tracing it to my y axis, we have minus 1. So... I can see my fx or my or y is equals to minus one, so which makes it which makes the problem solved. So let's I just express this in the form of a ring-like figure. So we have we have three less than x less than five. So this is what we have. So now going on to our final step. So this is fx equals. So fx is equal to. Our first value of y, we had it to be minus x plus 2. And our second value of y, we had it to be minus 1. So the range of values we had for our first value of y was x greater than 1 and greater than 0 and less than 3. And my second range of value we had for this one was, which we have it here, to be x greater than 3 and less than 5. So our final piece we need to add to the analysis will be... Now looking at our starting points just like we did on, on other videos the starting point was from 2 and this is another starting point right so this starting point let's consider it to be fx right so um 2 is constant now let's look for the values of x we can use to denote it so for the values of 2 here for if we have x to be 5 and for the value of 2 for the value of 2 here x was 0 and you have x equal to be 5 so x is equal to be uh, is equal to 5 so you can actually denote our final piece to be fx is equal to fx plus 5. That means between our periods, my function of x here, which is 2, adding 5 to 0, which is 5, will still give me the same, the same value of x here. For, that means between 0 and 5, they are, two, they are the same values of x. So my period is between 0 and 5, right? My period is just what 5 units. So which makes my period equal to 5 units. Now if you don't understand how I got my period, I'm just going to explain it. My period, like I said, is your distance space between two starting points. So this is the starting point here. Then it flows. Now don't, don't, don't look at this straight line, this line here. This line is just basically a faint line. Now your graph, is. this is just your graph. Right? Not like this. This is just your graph. There's just like there's a, there's a breaking point between this and this. So this is just the starting point, then it, it then it ends here and it starts here again, right? So this is my just my two starting points. And the space between my two starting points, my x axis, that is my period. So that is why it's five minutes. So thank you guys for watching and please and please do so well to subscribe. So now our next video we are going to be looking at integrals of periodic function. So with that, when we, we are through with integrals, then we dive through to Fourier series. Then you understand. No need for, yeah, then you understand all we need to know about Fourier series. So, thank you guys for watching and please and please subscribe.